background. My name is Matti Straub Fischer, and I'm the headmaster of the Chaos Pilot Switzerland and uh, guardian of Seven Generations. Seven Generations is a Swiss-based organization that looks into how can we develop uh, and transform education and business in the next seven generations, which approximately is about 250 years. So quite an impossible task and it's fun to be part of this uh, moving around. I know that you have been looking and are looking in uh, this conference into the question of how can we play with the duality uh, and the dual educational system moving forward in a paradigm change, how to move into action. I think what we can see as the challenge today in most educations of level of university, but also on the level of secondary schools and even sometimes primary schools, is that we have a tendency to make theory too important. So in a way you could say we uh, feed the brain the knowing about, uh, we value that higher than the practical application of things, the gnosis, the really making it your own, um, what we in our school call dance hammering. We are training since 2012 people in a three, now four year, uh, not only bachelor equivalent, but in a practical training that we now call an apprenticeship. And I think this model of an apprenticeship, uh, the master apprenticeship that people have used for uh, hundreds of years in learning with a person, learning with a master, uh, close by with a teacher living with this person and really being very close uh, over um, extensive period of time of a few years until you're actually mastering uh, a particular craft, a skill, that feels like it is one of the challenges that we want to get back into. So the value that we always hear our students are concerned about is, well, what kind of a paper will I get in the end? And the point is, it shouldn't be so much the paper that you have in the end, but it should be, how do you show up? Do you incorporate and do you embody the skills, the values, the attitudes and the knowledge that you have gained in your training? Does it show? Can people feel the power of what you're bringing, the expertise, the care that you have and also your sense of longing and striving for excellence and for beauty. I think our school system, we have had a tendency of focusing too much on the outcomes of test results, uh, just having people pass well, uh, which we believe makes us as a school look good and um, will really be appreciated, of course, by our students. But I think we're going way too soft on most of our students today. I think there is a tendency that uh, parents today have an expectation that their children should be treated very special. And yes, of course, they are dear people, but I think there's a point where kids just need, and teenagers and young adults need to learn what does it mean to be self-responsible. And that is a hard thing, because what we know from uh, neurological um, research is that most uh, adults until the age of 26 do have a lot of problems and can hardly uh, neurologically really understand the reason or cause and effect. So learning about what does it mean when I do this and getting the results that I'm going for or what is it, what happens if I do this uh, and learning to follow up, develop a self-discipline, not blaming the outside but knowing, huh, maybe uh, I need to look, what did I do differently? What could I change so a result is different? I think that is something we need to practice. So being tougher with our kids, I think on uh, a very loving way, but, but learning to not go soft, not just trying to wave people through education is very important. Now, if you have a class of 25 children or if you have a class of 300 university students, it is very hard to check self-discipline. It's very hard to do that. So creating frames of working with smaller groups, creating frames of one-on-one -on -one where you and I see what is actually going on. Where am I doing well? Where do I need to get uh, uh, maybe pull up my energy level a bit more? Where do I need to make progress? 
uh, how can I learn from things that are happening, what we call mistakes. And how could this move into when we're then learning with one another as a small group, as a tribe, as a school, as an organization, or even as a business? And how does that affect our learning culture, the collaborative and collective field of consciousness that we are fostering, growing, and bringing together? So I think there is a important case to be made in today's university educations that is somewhere between the theoretical knowledge that we want to get people um, into their lives, into their backpacks, into their different minds, and the practice-oriented training, which means that people are actually good at a craft, at skills, at concrete uh, knowledge that is embodied, that they have inside, rather than a paper that says, yes, I did a course in accounting, but maybe I cannot really uh, remember how to do an accounting well for a small project, which happened to me, for example. Uh, and I think we, we need to really learn how do we grow these skills into practice. So my pledge is to look more into the ancient model of a master apprenticeship. How can we create closer learning relationships? How can we create dojos of actually practicing day by day with one another? Now, what does this mean? It, of course, means that we as teachers, we join our students. So if we are preaching uh, water and we drink wine, that doesn't go down very well. So whatever we want our students to be good at, we got to live and embody ourselves. So can we do that? as a faculty, as a group of teachers, as a headmaster? Can we live according to those same measures that we're putting up for our students and our pupils? I think this is, is a practice of um, a uh, field, of a sphere, of a domain, or bringing a curriculum into life. So when people walk into your space, your school, your training field, your dojo, that people go like, whoa, this is alive here. It's not just you talking about it or you publishing a paper about it, but it is actually coming alive in how we walk in here. We can feel the attitudes, we can feel the states of being of how a value, a quality is being lived into. And I think, of course, this uh, brings along and, and challenges us as faculty members, as professors, as teachers, as guides, as coaches and as mentors to be very close and to be transparent with our students of what is going on. They need to learn how we are dealing with problems. They need to learn what the problems are that we are facing. So if we keep organizational development questions hidden, so what is going on in our school, in our faculty, what are the challenges, what are the problems, and what pisses us off, what makes us sad, what makes us angry, what moves us, what are we uh, maybe disappointed about. These emotional realities need to become transparent. So if we want our students, our pupils to learn from this reality, we as a staff need to learn to become transparent about it. Then they can join in, then they can help. Then a three-year education, a four-year education, a five-year education or a nine-year education becomes much more meaningful because they are learning how to actually practice, how to live things. We have a beautiful system here in Switzerland with what we call a dual uh, educational system where you can choose between a more academic uh, pathway or a more practice-oriented pathway. Um, and still, there is a lot of judgment going on even in this world where some people believe, well, one way is the better than the other. And the point is, no, they're not better than each other. They're just different. So I think allowing and sh challenging our children to choose what they love best, that is what we're really here to do. So I think if we want to move in this new paradigm into a more practice-oriented, a more real way where students can actually embody, take things in and make it their own, so they can become responsible global citizens that will require us as teachers to be much more transparent, to share what we're feeling, to share what we're seeing and what we think is needed in change.